I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife for saying completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast here in one of the strangest settings that we've done an interview, George. Uh, just want to explain why you're here today. Hey, Joe. Yeah, no, we are here in Wickham. Hi, Wickham, is it? Yeah. Uh, for the premiere of the documentary about Bayo Akin Fenwa, uh, who uh, is a Wasserman client like myself. So I'm here to support uh, about his trials and tribulations, his fantastic career, he's bigger than... Bigger than life sometimes, personality, uh, on and off the pitch. And, um, and he's also dabbled a little bit in the boxing world because he's going to be a very successful boxing MC in time to come. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, I had to come down and support. Definitely a busy week for you. Uh, the James English podcast come out. I know uh, some people are dying to get on that podcast. How did you find that one? Lovely, great to meet, great to meet James. So uh, obviously, I've started my podcast now. I'm uh, I'm on audio only, not not, not cheeky quite, little plug. Not as sophisticated as as you uh, video video guys, but yeah. So my podcast guys reached out to James and said, Do you want to get me on. Yeah, he was keen, so we set something up. He was down in London, and it was great. Lovely. I mean, he's he's very good at his job, James. It was great to meet him. Um, I've I've seen. A few of his uh, episodes, you know, I've been following him for a little while, so uh, you know he's, he's very good at what he does. He, he listens when he needs to listen, he asks the right questions, he gives you time to, to breathe and chat, So and he's got a great following, and it, gives, it gets great traction. So uh, no, it was great for me to be part of it. I'm very thankful for him for having me on. Definitely. Moving on to your podcast then, from one podcast to another. Just want to give it a little plug. Yeah, yeah, it's the George Groves Boxing Club podcast. It is out everywhere you get your podcasts so uh, you know whether that be Apple Podcasts Spotify I like Spotify I'm a Spotify man so yeah it's audio we have a boxing related person to come in and have a little bit of a deep dive into a boxing related subject and it goes out weekly so every Wednesday today we had Tony Jeffries come out so the, the marvellous Tony Jeffries who's a former Olympian Olympic bronze medalist from Beijing who uh, sadly for him had to retire a little bit early through hand injuries but then has reinvented himself he's quite the entrepreneur set up now in LA uh, with his box and burn gym which he's franchised he's now doing online courses and he's in your world IFL he's a YouTuber now with over a million subscribers so it was fascinating for me to listen to a guy who knows his boxing but also knows his business knows his brands uh, so anyone who wants to uh, get involved in that sort of the world or anything where they might be a little bit entrepreneurial it's a great podcast for you because it gives you some great tips and tricks and things you know that, that are needed to, to build a brand in that world and he's doing really well for himself and I'm very thankful for him for coming on my podcast. 100% Tony Jeffries makes us look small fry in the old YouTube world now, 100%. Moving on to the boxing world, current topics, obviously. I know you're going to get asked about this a lot, but the breaking news is Conor Ben has kind of relinquished his British boxing bald licence. That probably isn't the best of look for Conor Ben. So what's your opinion on it? Uh, I, I literally just heard it now, like five minutes ago. So I... Um I have no instant reaction to it. I hope that, uh, I mean, like anything, I, for me as a fighter, an ex-fighter, you know, when you don't know the, the every, you don't know the full detail, you don't know the nitty-gritty, you're better off just sort of steering clear of it. I'm not going to give a concrete opinion. Um, you know, he's denied knowing, taking a banned substance, but he's tested positive for banned substance. And I'm sure at this point he's probably been advised to relinquish his border control license as opposed to maybe getting a ban so he might have even received that advice from the border control they might have said look mate we got to make an example of you we're going to ban you for four years or five years or whatever so hand it in now and we don't we don't have to be that person you don't have to deal with it but who knows that's just me speculating um i'm sure he's got legal advice but also promotional managerial just boxing heads around him giving him advice hopefully the best advice um but yeah it's sickening like where we're in a sport today where you know uh, adverse findings are found in voluntary drug, drugs tests so we don't know what that means does that mean 
he's been uh, he's been cheating or not. He, you know, as I say, I, I'm not part of the team. I don't know, so I'd rather just you know sort of stay clear of that sort of. Definitely appreciate that. Just a couple of quick fire ones then, because we know we've got to get to, down to the premier. But uh, Chisora versus Tyson Fury three. We saw the press conference last week, and uh, it's been given a bit of backlash. But what did you make of the fight? Not, not. Uh, well, he was calling uh, Fury was calling out Chisora a little while ago, so it seemed like that was the fight that was going to get made. Um, Chisora's up for it as long as you know, he hold out until. Money's right for him, and rightly so for him. Um, <clears throat> glad you saw the press conference. I, I missed it. Have you seen the first two fights? Can you remember them? Many years back. I was probably like, that's all then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's exciting. Well, yeah. So, I mean, it, not a lot of options for, for Fury, I suppose. So, um, and, and Chisora, he's, he's a big name. He's entertained. He's always in good fights. So, you know, it, it makes sense, I think. Um, Good on them, you know, heavyweights, let them, let them go for it. Excellent. And the other side of the heavyweight coin kind of it's got confirmed that Joshua isn't fighting this year as a fight yourself. Kind of after the first frotch loss, obviously that was very controversial circumstances. You was in there straight away, like in the face. I saw, heard on the podcast you wanted to promote the fight. You were checking out site dates, at Twittenham, Twickenham and everything like that. Do you think it's right for Joshua to take a little step back after two losses on the bounce now coming from yourself like a former fighter? Yeah, I mean, we're in totally, totally different situations. So he's been a unified world champion for, for a long time uh, and then faced these losses. Um, so he might need a little mental break. It might just be that the right fight is just not, you know, right now for him. So, yeah, if it's not right for him, then have a break. Um, he might be weighing up his future anyway. You know, he's, he's achieved an awful lot in his career. You know, he's, he must have earned good money and he's been involved in mega nights. So... You know, there might have been that initial knee-jerk reaction to get back in the ring because you don't want to, you know, fall out of love with boxing. Whereas when you're in it, you're in it. You can't really think about anything else. So, um, but probably the best move, like pro- probably the right move, is to don't rush back for a fight. You know, take your time. Wait. You might want to fight the winner of Chisora Fury if that ends up being a decent fight. Um, does decent numbers and it's in the UK two Brits then he might step in and it's a bigger fight you know for him down the line so Dillian White's a rumoured opponent obviously he's got to get past Jermaine Franklin on the 26th of November but do you think that's the right step for AJ going straight back in with a big domestic dust up this rematch with Dillian White yeah sure I mean, whatever everyone I'm not fussed about the ever it's all the same they live forever they can fight each other forever they ain't gonna, yeah, why not? They eh? get loads of money for it. Well, good for them, you know what I mean? They're big lumps, they, they sell, you know. So, and there's only a hand, there ain't, they ain't, they ain't endless supply of them, they just have to keep, keep coming if they run out of opponents and fight each other. So, yeah, I think that's, that's a decent fight. Um, White's been, he's an improved fighter since the first time they fought, obviously, Joshua the same. So, yeah, why not? Eh? Last one, we started off with the reason you're here, Simon Wasserman. We'll finish with a Wasserman question. I was at the press conference yesterday, Troy Williamson versus Josh Kelly. Fantastic domestic dust-up. Just to comment on that one. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. Really looking forward to that one. Um, I've, I've sort of... I haven't got a clear sort of dis- d- defining opinion on it, so I've, I've sort of put it out to the panel, and some people will think that... Um, Kelly might be a little bit too slick and a bit more comfortable at the weight. Uh, and then lots of people are like, nah, you know, Troy Williams just walked through him. So I'm sort of split. I'm sort of split. Usually the Josh Kelly fights, he's, a, he's explosive for the first three rounds and then, you know, he's, uh, he can be a bit vulnerable. I think we'll get, I think, I think that might be what it would be. Um, we'll see, we'll see. So I think, I think I'd probably make Williams the favourite for that fight, but. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good talent, um, Kelly, and usually what's said about him is that he struggles mentally, but if he's in a good mental space, then you see the best version of him. Uh, they're both sort of fighting out of their hometowns as such, you know what I mean? So it'll be a good, great, uh, great night. Uh, there'll be a lot of energy in the room. I'm looking forward to that one. It'll be really good. 100%. George, thank you for your time. As always, make sure you get at George's new podcast. Yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah I've got, I mean, I've been, I've been at it for a while now and I keep forgetting to plug it. So fuck it, man. Well, let's get on it. Listen to it. It's good. It's the best one out there. We're climbing the charts steady, steady. So, And there's plenty of boxing podcasts out there. So if yours is the best, then it must be good then. Yeah, exactly. Well, easy. Well, I'm glad you said it. You know. <laughs> Cheers, George. Thank you very much. Speak to you again soon. Cheers, mate.
I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. <laughs> See if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.